Thank you very much for joining me on Meteorologist Brian Shields. Lots to cover, so let's get right to it. This big blob coming in. I know there's been a lot of attention elsewhere, uh, but again, not taking uh, my eye off the ball. Again, this is a concern to me for life-threatening flooding. There's a potential of that through the Eastern Caribbean. You see it yourself and the potential that this does develop into a tropical storm over the next couple days. At the least, tropical storm conditions will be possible at times. Watching out for heavy rain, Barbados, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Grenada, Trinidad, and Tobago. This is going to work its way through the Caribbean. I want to cover that, and I want to cover what's going on in the Gulf of Mexico. Here's that other blob of rain and storms in the Bahamas. That'll cross over Florida, move into the Gulf. Forecast on that right on track. I want to get into that. Plus, we have Hillary out here, historic storm for parts of the southwest U.S. I'll cover that. The very latest models, the winds on all of these. I want to dive into the winds and the rain, plus what else is going on out there? A couple more strong tropical waves. So it is busy. We'll go step by step and I'll take you through it. Again, here's the broader picture, areas of potential development, couple spots out here, those kind of on the back burner for now. This is a big concern to me. Everyone's been talking about everything else, but again, this right now, and you can see why. You may be having some heavy rain in spots, and I do expect further development out of this as it rolls through the Caribbean. That's gonna bring heavier rain potentially to Haiti, Dominican Republic, uh, Puerto Rico. So I'm gonna, I wanna get into that. And then of course, what's going on in the Eastern Pacific. Here's that blob of rain that's gonna work its way into the Gulf of Mexico. It could develop a little bit. I'll get into that in a second, watching Texas, Louisiana, Mexico. But look at this flare up. And this is what I've been talking about for a few days while everything else has been getting the attention. And again, you see that big area of uh, some rain. Now, in the short term, the wind shear is way back here. Wind shear helps rip apart storms. We like wind shear this uh, time of year, but it's this area here. Uh, there's not a ton of wind shear, and that's why it's getting a little bit better organized. So, and it is an area of investigation right now. They're running computer models on it. We, behind the scenes, we're doing a lot of stuff to keep an eye on this, and I want to get into that further. My big concern is, again, the water temperatures. They are so, so warm. 30 degrees Celsius in spots. We're looking at upper 80s, low 90s Fahrenheit in some locations. So with low wind shear and very water, very warm water, that's why this area has flared up and it could develop even further. Now, models are a little bit split. This is no big deal though. Overall, both the uh, GFS, the American model, and the European model in the green here are both seeing some development out of this system as it works its way into the Caribbean, Eastern Caribbean, and then sliding across. Now, the American model brings up to the north a little bit more so. That would be, mean more rain and the flood potential gets higher for Puerto Rico, for example. The European model, a little bit more to the west and then drawing it back to the north, that would be, mean more rain for Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Either way, the system has yet to fully develop, so the models are gonna have some slight differences but this is not a big disagreement. Both are showing some signs of development and I'm seeing that as well. So let me show you what we're seeing. Here's the American model. And again, I'll get into this in a moment. Here's what's going on. Again, that flood potential gets higher and higher today and tomorrow watching Trinidad and Tobago up through Dominica for that highest chance of flooding and you see it flaring up look at this this is by tomorrow morning there's your time frame to take you step by step look at all this rain and where you see these brighter colors the yellows and the oranges that would be some heavier rain in that we're going to have some gusty winds I'll get to the gusty winds in a moment and then still by tomorrow evening look at all this rain now at this point the models differ a little bit American model will kind of want to bring the rain to the north. European model, a little bit more out into the uh, Caribbean, trying to work its way into the central Caribbean. That's the difference. I'll keep an eye on that. But you see by Monday, by five o'clock, a flare up of rainstorms, even Antigua, Barbuda, Montserrat, over toward uh, Ceiba, uh, Stacia, we could see some rain. U.S. and British Virgin Islands working its way into Puerto Rico. That flood threat will remain high. Now, the models have been, I don't just look at the models. They've been a little behind in this system overall. That's why I was giving you the heads up a couple of days ago uh, about this. So with that said, right now it's not showing it spinning up into a tropical storm. You see here by the time we get into a five o'clock on Tuesday, but the models have been behind. Again, they've been playing catch up with this system and I've been seeing it getting better organized. I've been seeing the environmental conditions uh, getting more favorable in the bad sense of the term for development. So I am concerned it does become a tropical storm. American model either way brings a lot of rain regardless of if it becomes a named storm 
storm or not, we're going to see that high potential for flooding, potentially over toward Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. But again, it depends on how far, how deep it gets into the Caribbean before it lifts to the north. And in Jamaica, if this were to continue to trek its way a little bit more off to the west, that could eventually bring some rain. But either way, a high rain event working its way into the Caribbean. As far as the winds are concerned, you see a little bit of white here. Occasionally, we could get some gusts around 80 kilometers an hour or 50 miles per hour. So anywhere from 56 to 80 kilometers an hour over the next couple days, that would be 35 to 50 miles per hour. But as I mentioned, the models are a little bit behind. If this starts to wrap up sooner and tries to become a tropical depression or tropical storm, we could have some even gustier winds out of that. So we'll keep an eye on the wind outlook with that. But again, and we could have some issues with power outages because of the rain. The rain itself, the flooding, impacts those power grids and uh, watching out for some of the gustier winds. So at least tropical storm-like conditions moving into the eastern Caribbean. Now, as far as the flood threat is concerned, this, is, this has really been popping out at me this morning. There is a ton of moisture with this tropical disturbance. So again, regardless of a name, just look at these brighter colors popping up over the next three days. Let me zoom down. As promised, I want to go island by island for you. You, and I'll get more specific over the next few videos, especially if this does develop. Now, Trinidad and Tobago, again, this is a computer model. Look at this white shading here, northern Venezuela right here. That would be 100 millimeters of rain or four inches of rain or higher. Now, again, this is a computer model, so it's not going to be exact. This rain could be a little bit more over here, could be up here, but either way, it is showing some uh, the potential for some higher totals over 100 millimeters of rain. And we had a lot of rain a couple weeks ago in parts of uh, Trinidad, and it's been uh, kind of active. So we're going to watch out for that threat of flooding. Look at these bright colors. This is even off the chart. We've got this black shading showing up in spots in white. The black would be 150 millimeters of rain. The red would be even higher. So this is a big, big concern. Again, we haven't seen uh, at least the potential of these totals yet this season. So over the next three days, not all at once, but over the next three days, we could have some spots in St. Lucia, St. Vincent the Grenadines, Grenada, Barbados. Some, some of us could get near 150 millimeters of rain. That's half a foot of rain. That would lead to mudslides and again, life-threatening flooding, especially at those river crossings. Now, this is going to be a wait and see. My friends in Puerto Rico, for example, I'll use us for example, Haiti, Dominican Republic. I need to see how this evolves because again, some of the modeling takes us a little bit more to the west and then lifts it up toward Hispaniola. Others want to draw this moisture into Puerto Rico. So I'm giving you the early heads up. Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti. Please watch this system very carefully. Not that it's necessarily going to become a hurricane, but because there is a ton of rain with it. And wherever this ends up, we are going to see flooding. But again, I need a little more time just to see how this develops throughout the day to see kind of how this or where this does lift to the north. So life-threatening flooding is a high likelihood with this system. We're talking flash flooding, mudslides. Huge concern for me will be the river crossings. And with that, again, only 100, uh, let's see, 150 millimeters of uh, water uh, or uh, half a foot of water can move a vehicle. So moving water that's about this tall, about this tall, can actually wipe away a vehicle. So giving you that heads up again, that is the power of water. And again, I was showing you those rain totals. Uh, they are the, the highest we've seen so far this season with a tropical system. And this is an unnamed system. Now, I'll get to this in a moment. Here's Hillary. Hillary, a very powerful system. Let me show you this, as promised. This is that blob of rain near the Bahamas today. So my friends in the Bahamas, we'll have some street flooding around as we get toward northern and central Bahamas. Then some of this rain crosses over. Now, uh, all on track with this, the track of this, the intensity with this as of now, it could develop a little bit. Now, tomorrow will be key. Uh, tomorrow into early Monday, if this does develop, we would see signs of it on Monday. Clearly, it's going to be sitting over the central portions of the Gulf of Mexico. Now, my friends in Louisiana, we need to get some rain. Most of it looks like it's going to stay down to the south, what I was showing you yesterday and even the day before, and then kind of pivot its way uh, back towards south Texas and then working its way into uh, northeastern uh, uh, Mexico. Now, as far as the modeling goes, as far as the atmospheric conditions go, some development is possible. It would not be surprising for this to spin up into a tropical storm and then work its way inland into uh, the south Texas coastline by the time we get into Tuesday. Either way, you can see some of the heavier rain that will be working in late 
late Monday into Tuesday. And then uh, whether or not it's a named storm, that rain continues to work in, misses a lot of my friends from Houston over toward uh, Baton Rouge. Most of that rain will be staying down to the south. But water temperatures, you know how it is in the uh, Gulf right now. Very, very warm. So again, that could spin up into a tropical storm. But either way, as far as the track goes and the rain is concerned, again, working its way toward Texas and parts of Mexico. All right, here is the big blob uh, right here. This is uh, that will uh, have the life-threatening flooding. This could become a tropical storm. That's why I led the video with this. Everyone's been kind of watching this, all this stuff out here, and of course, all eyes have been on Hillary. This is a big, big concern uh, for me as it works its way into the Caribbean. Now, what's been happening overall with these waves out here? And again, uh, I'll keep an eye on these. This one should stay out to sea. This one may develop a little bit, but what they've been doing is kind of parting the dry air. You can see the dry air in this orange shading up to the north or down to the south. So as these new tropical waves come off, there's not as much dry air, so it's more likely to uh, develop. Uh, uh, development will be a higher possibility with the new tropical waves that will be coming off the coast. Now, the uh, uh, Atlantic side, the Atlantic Basin, the Atlantic Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean has a separate set of lists than the Eastern Pacific. The next name on the list is Emily. I don't know which area will become Emily. I'm watching the Gulf of Mexico, as I just showed you. Uh, that area that's trying to develop, working into Barbados and St. Lucia now, down through Trinidad and Tobago, that could become Emily, or we'll just wait for something out there in the open waters of the Atlantic, but plenty of areas to watch. Now, here is Emily, a powerful hurricane at this point already. As I mentioned, you see that flare up right there and right there. I was mentioning this the last few days. It's a predecessor rain event, and I was cautioning with that. Again, the focus has been down here, but I kind of been looking at ahead of it that there would be a rain event at ahead of it. That's a problem because there's already rain working into parts of northern Mexico, swinging back toward the southwest U.S., while Hillary is way the heck down here. So we're already going to see flooding in spots before the heaviest batch of rain works in. Right now, as far as Hillary is concerned, you can see it again. It is a major hurricane. Winds right now at about 130 uh, miles per hour. We've got the tropical storm warnings that are out for Southern California. For the first time on record, we have tropical storm warnings. Again, uh, the Gulf of California is a mess. Again, staying off of the water, obviously, clearly. As we get into Sunday morning, that's when we'll have some of the heaviest weather working in to the northern Baja and then lifting up into California. So uh, this will just uh, progressively get worse, but especially tomorrow and tomorrow night. Southwest United States, some of the worst weather will work in as we get into tomorrow night. As far as the probability goes of sustained tropical storm force winds, there's at least a 50 to 60% chance in Southern California of sustained tropical storm force winds. That is rare to say the least. We've got a tropical storm that is going to work its way into California. While that is grabbing headlines, thinking of my friends in Mexico as well, mudslides will continue to be a potential. Very high seas over toward uh, Cabo this morning. Models have been locked in. The American model has done the best job with this system. European model was trying to sweep this out into the Pacific uh, just a few days ago. But again, the American model was insisting on this coming on shore, and that is going to be the case. So showing this to you. This is by later today. And as I mentioned, the rain at ahead of it, that is a major, major problem because the system, by the time we get into tomorrow morning, is still all the way down here. Again, tropical storm to hurricane conditions working their way into Baja, Cal uh, California. And then this will lift up to the north and just spread the rain. Uh, Tijuana jumping over to San Diego, Los Angeles. Incredible amounts of rain. We're going to see life-threatening flash flooding, extreme flash flooding for parts of California. Nevada and western sections of Arizona. This again by tomorrow morning and then look what happens by the time we get into tomorrow evening. Heaviest weather works in. So the worst weather for extreme northwestern Mexico into California will be starting uh, tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night. That'll be the worst weather. A long duration event though, as I mentioned, there's that rain that's already out ahead of it. Uh, that rain just continuing to work up the uh, five and you see it here, uh, these brighter colors showing that heavier rain by the time we get into tomorrow night and that continues to filter in and lift to the north. Las Vegas, some heavy rain. And again, western sections of Arizona, we'll see that rain lifting all the way up to the north. We could see a year or two worth of rain just over the next three days in this area. Look at these 
winds. This red shading here and that yellow shading, those are some of the strongest winds. Really hurricane force winds right in there where you're looking at the red. Uh, 110 kilometers an hour, 70 miles per hour, 74 uh, would make it, uh, would be those hurricane force winds plus. And you see those winds, a little bit of green as well, 125 miles per hour. There will be weakening. We've got the land interaction and the cooler water, so it is going to weaken. And then the rain will be the big issue with the mudslides and landslides, life threatening flash flooding Mexico, and then lifting as we work our way back into California. As far as the winds go, very strong winds again tomorrow morning in parts of Mexico, and then it lifts to the north. The wind field, as these systems weaken, the wind field, yeah, it weakens some, but it actually spreads out. Look at this white shading working its way all the way into Arizona. That white shading are winds of 50 miles per hour, and you can see that working its way into Southern California and lifting to the north by the time we get into tomorrow night. Again, late tomorrow, tomorrow night, that's when we're gonna have some of the worst weather. Winds will be coming in out of the south, so you have the flooding, you've got that rain event, the water event with this, and then you've got those winds that will be strong. And look at some of these rain totals again, we're looking, look at this black shading here into uh, northwestern Mexico into California. That's 150 millimeters of rain or six inches of rain. We'll see upwards of about 200 millimeters of rain. That would be eight inches of rain plus. We're going to see a few spots around a foot of rain. In southern California, even into Nevada, we could get some spots that get a foot of rain. Again, a couple years worth of rain could happen in just one event. And the name on the list we're looking at now is Hillary. The next name on the list after that is uh, Irwin, but again, all eyes on Hillary as we work our way out there. So let me get you to some of the forecast. Again, Barbados, high concern for flooding today and tomorrow as this system is trying to develop in the Eastern Caribbean. St. Lucia, same thing, prepare for some flooding nearby. Heavy rain, keep me posted in the comments. Trinidad and Tobago, an 80% chance today, a 70% chance for tomorrow. Working our way into Grenada, again, leading with these locations. These locations have the highest threat of flooding as we go over the next two to three days with this new tropical system moving in. Again, an unnamed system for now, but this is going to cause the flooding. There's no doubt about that. Today and tomorrow, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, that high chance of rain working in. Jamaica, 50 to 60% chance as we go throughout the weekend. As we get back toward the Bahamas, again, we have some of the rain now. That's the rain that is going to shift to Florida and then into the Gulf and then eventually over to Texas. Belize isolated this weekend, a 30% chance, a 50% chance on Monday. Cayman Islands, about a 50% chance of scattered showers and storms. And a 40 to 50% chance over the next three days, Turks and Caicos. Most of the rain is up to the north over by the northern Bahamas as that system works its way into the Gulf of Mexico. Guadalupe, again, we're going to be on the edge of things over toward uh, Guadalupe with a lot of heavy rain just to the south, but I'll keep an eye on how close it gets. Dominica, so Guadalupe, Dominica, Martinique, we're on the northern end of this big blob of rain that is moving in, so I'll keep a, uh, keep a very close eye on you. See Martinique, that rain chance gets even higher tonight and tomorrow, looking out for that flood threat as well tonight. Now, Puerto Rico, down the road, I need to see when this system curls up to the north to know exactly how much rain we're gonna get in Puerto Rico in the US and British Virgin Islands. Rain chance should increase on Monday either way, but again, I need a little more time to see how this system develops. Same thing in Haiti in the Dominican Republic. If this stays in the Caribbean a little bit longer, it may shift over toward Haiti and the Dominican Republic and bring intense amounts of rain uh, starting late tomorrow into early next week. St. Kitts and Nevis uh, over toward Montserrat, rain chance at about 50%, 30 to 40% chance, Antigua and Barbuda the next couple days, 30 to 40% chance, my friends in Anguilla, and again, that rain chance could be even higher. Anguilla, Antigua, Barbuda, St. Martin, Sebastasia, it really hinges on how this system develops today. Aruba, Cure Curacao and Bonaire, again, most of that rain stays away, limit at 20% chance. We have a high chance of rain today, tomorrow, and Monday as we work our way into Costa Rica and Panama. In northern Venezuela, 30 to 40% chance of rain, 50% chance today in Guyana, 40% chance uh, tomorrow, 30% chance today in Suriname, 20% chance for tomorrow. So again, this what's going on in the Caribbean has great attention of mine. Uh, this Caribbean system is trying to develop regardless major areas of flooding. I showed you those rain totals. We'll get some gusty winds as well. Watching out for mudslides. Please leave your location 
and uh, what you're seeing out there over the next couple days in the comments as we build this weather community. That's what this channel is for. And then again, watching many more areas, Gulf of Mexico, watching Hillary, uh, watching those waves out there in the tropical Atlantic. The next name on the uh, list in the Atlantic side, that is Emily. So again, lots of rain. I'm watching it 24 seven for you. Got you covered with this system and other systems out there. Please be safe, use caution at those river crossings. I will keep you posted. Thank you for subscribing. Have a good rest of your day.